Okay, so uh, the problem that we did last time, which was um, reflection of a shock wave, right, from a, a vertical wall. So um, basically, what we had is there is a compression corner, or so what this, and we have a, a flow uh, coming in, right? Supersonic flow coming in, and it. <clears throat> encounters this sort of uh, a corner which results in turning the flow, right? And this is uh, due to a uh, shock wave, okay? So let me sort of draw this a little right. So, we have an inclined or an oblique uh, shock wave. So, therefore, when we uh, say this encounters, this is uh, flow coming in, then this gets deflected, right? And so, this angle is theta, okay? And the shock wave angle is uh, beta. Now, uh, let us uh, try this here that now we, we know we have talked about the theta beta m relationship. Okay? Now, um, this is a diagram which you can, which is a standard, in standard books this, should, this diagram is available. Basically, uh, it is plotted for various combinations of theta beta and m. Right? So, let us say for a given uh, shock wave angle, Right, and uh, for a given uh, Mach number, we change the uh, theta. It goes through a range of thetas. Then uh, we will look at the pressure change, right, with the change in the deflection angle. Now this is for a given uh, Mach number and a given shock wave angle. So for this particular shock, say, right. And this particular uh, Mach number, if we uh, change this, this uh, theta can be changed for a various range. Now, in that case, how does the um, pressure differ? So, in, in such, such a case, uh, for example, now say in here, this is say region 1 and this is region 2. So, the static pressure here is uh, P1. And the static position behind this is uh, P2. So when you so basically here, this is the point where theta is equal to zero. So this point is P1, right? P1. And uh, if we plot a pressure diagram, it will look something like this. Okay. So this is basically for M1, right? And as you can see that there is a maximum value of this, uh, a maximum value of this theta, right? And uh, maximum value of this theta. And uh, as we've talked about before, if the deflection angle is more than theta max, right? Then we will not have an oblique shock. Then we will, yes. Okay, so this is what we have in terms of uh, the P theta diagram or pressure deflection diagram. Okay, so now the one region here is denoted by, say, this point uh, P. Okay, now let us uh, do a particular thing over here. Now let us do do two things. Let us remember the. Now, say I have a shock wave like this, right? So, this is a shock wave. Say it, it happens from somewhere over here, right? So, if I, and the flow is from left to right over this. So, flow is this way, right? So, say I move, I, I, I move this way, stand here. On, on the wave, on the shock wave, and look downstream, okay? And I look downstream over here. 
then this shock wave is to my left, right. So, therefore, this is called it is called a left running shock wave, right. So, essentially what I am doing is this shock is generated from here and propagating this way, right. And if I say I move along with the shock, stand here on the shock and I look downstream, right. So, then this shock will be to my left. Right? And therefore, this is called a left running shock. On the other hand, like we did uh, last time, right? say we have right, and we have a shock wave like that. Right? So, in this case, this angle is say beta and this angle is say also is just say beta, but you can see that the sensors are different, it is just in a different direction. Now, in here too, now say I, the flow, the, the direction of the flow is the same. So, here again, this is the direction of the flow. So, this is downstream. Now, I travel like that along with the shock, right. So, I, uh, the shock is generated here. So, I start traveling with it and stand here on the shock and look downstream, right. Then, the shock is to my, so I look downstream like that, okay. Then the shock is to my right. So, therefore, this is called a right running shock. Okay? So, this is called a right running shock. Now, if for this particular uh, for this particular case then, right? Now, this is say a uh, deflection angle theta. Okay. Now, for example, so this here, say for this particular case that I am showing you. So, for example, so say it comes here and it gets deflected, right? It gets deflected by say theta a here, it gets deflected by theta a and this comes here, right? And this also gets deflected by uh, theta a. It is just that uh, it also gets deflected by uh, say let us call this theta b, b which is equal to theta a. Okay? Now, in, in magnitude both are same, it is just that this is deflected in a clockwise fashion. So, if you consider this as positive and this is negative. So, if I were to come here, so therefore, say I am going from so, let us let us call this here. So, this is say section 1 and this is section 2 for the left running wave. Okay? And this is section 1 and section 2 for the right running wave. Okay? So, for the left running wave, so P 1 is uh, this condition, which is also the condition for uh, the right running wave. Now, for the left running wave, when we come to section here, the deflection angle is theta a. So, basically what I do is come here. So, this is the point say, right. So, this is theta a. So, this is the corresponding pressure, right. Now, similarly, we come on the, the negative way to theta b. So, if we come, if we do that, so it is the same distance over here. So, say this is right this is theta b which is equal to uh, theta a okay so therefore this region here is p b okay so this is how we represent these two points on this p theta diagram okay now let's do a thing over here now this becomes interesting now uh, if we Consider the di uh, consider the problem that we did last time. Okay, let me just uh, sort of uh, kind of remind ourselves what we did. So basically, we had a shock wave, right, which was traveling, right, and this angle. Okay, I'll have to look that up. So what was the beta one? Okay, so this was thirty five degrees. Okay, this was 35 degrees and then it hits a wall over there, right. It hits a wall over there and what we get is the reflected shock, right, which we found out to be finally 
this uh, reflected uh, shock was I think 29.5. Yes, so that was 29.5. Okay, now if, so let us call now this region as 1, 2, and 3. And what we're going to look, look here is uh, basically we're going to try and look at the pressures P theta diagram. Okay, so if we want to do that, let us look at the deflection angles. So this was the incident flow. So this was M1 and P1, right? Then it got deflected, okay? And this deflection was 16 degrees, if I'm not correct. Yes. So this was, say, theta uh, is equal to 16 degrees, okay? And here again, this deflection was 16 degrees, okay? So this is region and this is say M2 and this is M3, okay? So now we found out, now we know that M1, okay? M1 is uh, 2.8, M2 is uh, 2.0, five three and uh, m three is one point four five now these are things that we know now let us see if we can plot uh, the how these points will look this one two and three okay on the p theta diagram how are we going to do that okay so okay so let me go to the other part okay so let's just uh, start doing this, okay? Theta and this is P, okay? Now, so now for M1, okay? If you come back here, M1 is here in one, in one region, so this is the incident wave. So let us, for M1, we will get this curve. Okay. Okay. So this has this is well. This has to be uh, you know symmetric and stuff. I'm not doing this artwork right. Okay. So this this is basically p one. Okay. And this here theta is equal to zero. So this is p one. Okay. Now then let us look at what happens when we go to sixteen degrees. Now then. At 16 degrees, okay. Now, um, so uh, this gets deflected by 16 degrees, right? Okay. Now let us let us go at say 16 degrees here. Okay. So this here, this point here, okay. This here, theta is equal to 16 uh, degrees. Okay, that is the uh, 16 degrees. Now you see at that particular point, so I basically deflect this by 16 degrees and reach this point. Okay, so this will be my P2. So what I do here, what I do here is that I move, okay. So if you look at this point, okay, this is my theta 16. So I move from here to here. So I move here to this point, okay, which is P2 and corresponds to a deflection of 16 degrees. Okay, now the next thing is that the next, next shock wave, the next shock wave is this one. So whatever I did here was for the, this is for M1, okay? Now this is for uh, M1, okay? And the pressure of, pressure of, the, uh, of the flow, static pressure uh, in front of the shock is P1 and behind the shock is P2, 
right, for this corresponding for this uh, m1, right, and the deflection is 16 degrees. So that's what is that's the kind of information we're getting from this kind of a plot. Now we come to the reflected shock. Now this is the reflected shock. Okay. Now what happens here is that the incident shock itself is at an angle 16 degrees. Right, if you look at this, this is M2. So unlike here, where the incident shock, the theta was zero. The deflection here was zero. So therefore, we got P1 over here. So the corresponding deflection is zero. And in the second region, the deflection is 16 degrees. So corresponding to 16, we got P2. Now, for this region, however, the incident wave, there are two things. Now, one is that the incident uh, um, Mach number here is M2, which is different from M1, and it is also inclined at an angle 16 degrees. Therefore, what happens here is that on this diagram, the origin of my next P theta diagram moves here, right? Moves here because the uh, it is inclined at an angle of 16 degrees already. So this is for M2. Okay, so if I have to uh, do this over here, so say let's uh, do this. Okay, so therefore the origin here shifts over here for the next one. Okay, so therefore what we get here is this. Okay, and so this is for M2, and which is already inclined at uh, 16 degrees. Okay, now how do we look for the point P3? Now what we look for P3 is that for M2, right? For M2, which is inclined at 16 degrees, this moves 16 degrees. The deflection is 16 degrees in the negative sense. So therefore, here on this diagram, what we do is for in on the M2 plot, so we move in the opposite direction exactly for 16 degrees. So this distance is 16, so this is also 16. So we just move in the opposite sense, right? And this becomes uh, P3, right? So this becomes uh, P3. So as you can see here again, that corresponding deflection here is zero, right? Which is what is being shown here, because once it deflects by 16 degrees, it is parallel to the upper wall. Okay. So therefore, so this is how we represent basically the two. Uh, the, this was the incident shock, and this is the reflected shock. Okay. Now. Uh, Let's do something, uh, one more uh, ex example uh, like this. Okay, so here let me just sort of uh, write down. Okay, now this pressure P1, P1 was one atmospheres. Okay, now this P1 is one atmospheres. Okay, um, this is the theta. Okay, this theta is 16 degrees, okay. Then P2, uh, P2 is 2.82 atmospheres and P3 is 6.54, I think, right? Yes, P3 is 6.54 atmospheres. So if you look at this diagram, you should be able to tell the pressure in the three regions here and the corresponding uh, deflections that the incident wave is undergoing. Okay, so th this is um, for what we did uh, you know, regarding the P theta diagrams and this is a problem which we did last time. Okay, Now let us um, look at something else over here, something a little more interesting. Okay, so say we have this, say we have, um, okay, so we had a compression corner and uh, we had an incident incident uh, shock wave right and it was hitting the other wall we had an incident shock wave and a reflected shock wave and so on now let us have two walls like that okay common scenario so let us have say 
Okay, so let us say we have two walls over here. So then, so say we have a shock wave which is emanating from here. Okay, and um, this is a shock wave which is emanating from here. Okay, so let us say that is uh, what I'm going to call this. Okay, so let us call this. Um, say this is region one. Okay, this is region one. Okay, and this is say theta two. Okay, so or say. Uh, shockwave angle is this okay so and we have another shock wave which is generated from this side okay from the upper wall and this angle is say beta 3 okay and let's just say that beta 2 is greater than beta 3 Okay. Now, if that happens, now what we have in this scenario is that we have two walls, we have uh, two incident shocks, okay, and they seem to be uh, heading for each other. So, what happens? Okay. So, basically, so we go here, okay, and they do meet at a common point, okay. So, this is a common point, okay. Now then, this continues as a refracted wave, okay. This refracts from here, okay. And similarly, this continues as a refracted wave, okay. So when that happens, now there is a certain okay. Now, let us sort of uh, discuss this a little bit. So, let us call this region as uh, 2, okay, and uh, this region as 3, okay, this region as 4, and this region as uh, 5, okay. Now, what we can see here is that, okay, so if we have a so, if we have an incidence like that, right, if we have an incidence like this, okay, now these two deflection angles are going to be different, obviously, right. So, then these two will deflect in a certain, it will deflect in a certain different way and then it hits here. So, let us say this is theta 2 and similarly this will deflect and uh, this region is 3, okay. So, this is uh, theta 3, okay. So, that is theta 3 and then it comes here and then it deflects again. Now, let us talk about this a little bit here. Now, as you can see that the shock wave angles are different, okay. Now, we did a problem last time and we showed that if the Mach numbers are same, okay. Then, by changing the uh, by changing the shock wave angle beta, we were able to change the nature of the shock, which means that the shock becomes stronger or weaker, right? Keeping the Mach number same. Okay. So now, when you keep the Mach number same, you're changing beta as a result of which the deflection angle is changing, right? Now, because of the two different deflection angles, so therefore, these two are different sort of shocks, right? And therefore, the entropy change across the shock structure, say uh, this, the, the, the one which I am showing in pink here, so say which is say A, B, right, is very different from the shock structure C and D. So, when I have an incident wave here, which interacts with, uh, which first get deflected by the incident shock A, and again gets def uh, deflected by the refracted shock B. So, now the entropy change between say region 1 and 4 is different from the entropy change between regions 1 
and 5. Okay? So, uh, therefore, as a, basically what we are saying is that S4, okay, S4 is not equal to uh, S5. So, therefore, now we have basically um, the discontinuous and entropy change. Okay? Now, if you look at the structure over here, Okay, if you look at the uh, structure over here, so now this is a place, right? So this is a place across which there is a discontinuous uh, entropy change, and this is called a slip line. Okay, this is called a slip line. Now. Um, there are some, there are some uh, physical reasoning behind this, however, or, or say boundary conditions. Now, the way this is, okay, these are horizontal, these, these are uh, straight walls, okay. So, this line has to be, this line will be a straight line, okay. So, it is probably inclined, it is probably inclined at some angle, say, uh, uh, phi here, not know what, and this, um, uh, and to be a a straight line instead of a curved line, the boundary condition to be imposed is P4 is equal to P5. Okay? P4 is equal to P5 and also as you can see the velocities here. So, basically say if it comes like that, so then it gets say uh, deflected like that. right? So, say this is M5. So, similarly if this goes here okay, and it is this is so this is m uh, 4 okay so therefore now this is p4 is equal to p5 now the velocities right v5 and uh, v4 are different in magnitudes are different in magnitudes but they are in the same direction okay now let what we shall do is now for this sort of a shock structure, let us go ahead and look at the p theta diagram and see if we if we can get you know anything interesting from uh, from here. Okay? So, what we will do is, so clearly what you can see here is that when uh, this the um, m 1 is using is going across the shock structure c and d. So, this deflection is going to be different here, the m 5 deflection is going to be different than uh, M4. Okay, so they're going to follow the same pattern as a slip line. Okay, so if we do this, so let us go here and try and plot, uh, say, the p theta diagram. Okay. Okay, so like we said, this is for the. Okay. Okay, here. So as we said before, this is for region one, and see theta is zero here, and this is p one. Okay. Now for the first case, so this is safe. This is for m one. Okay. This is for m one, and if you go from say a region say one to two, which is beyond the shock structure A, right? This is the incident shock A. Then it deflects to theta two. Okay it deflects through uh, theta 2 okay and then it in gets the, and then it um, encounters the uh, refractive shock uh, b which is incident so that is inclined uh, the uh, m2 here already is inclined at the m2 here is already inclined at say theta 2 so anyway let us look at the point p2 so that is for m1 okay so if we go on m1 so this is m1 right and if i go along m1 okay if i travel along m1 to theta 2 okay then what i get is p2 okay p2 now for the a refracted for the refracted wave now refracted uh, shock wave which is already therefore inclined at, at the point theta 2 the origin has now shifted here so for that so the, basically this is the origin 
of the refracted wave. So, if I were to do this, over here. Okay. So, this is already inclined at the point uh, theta, uh, theta 2. Okay. And now, for the other case, for the other case is that it moves here and uh, it, this is the incident wave. Okay. Now, this is for m 1 again. So, let us go back to the m 1 curve and deflect it by the theta 3, which means so, this is the m 1 curve okay, and what this is, this is for m 2. Okay. Now, here is the m 1 curve, on that what we need to do is go negatively to theta 2 and if you remember theta, theta 3 is less than theta 2 and that is how I have drawn this here. So, what you get here is this p 3. Okay, and the diffracted, um, uh, the origin of the diffracted, uh, diffracted uh, wave of the shock structure D will is moved over here, right? So then, what we get is, this is the new shock structure. So what we get is this. Okay, so now let's sort of go over this. What we are looking at is that this is this is one shock structure right so basically we are looking at uh, four things here so we have two incident uh, shock waves right now for both these incident shock waves we have the same mach number right so therefore this is region 1 so for region 1 we have mach number 1 and here so we have this incident shock wave which uh, then gets uh, refracted as b Right. So, therefore, we have this shock wave for which the incident mark is m 2 and we have this uh, shock wave for which the incident mark is m 3. Right. So, this is this is m 3 over here. So, which is what I have drawn. So, if you see the uh, white plot here that is for mark number 1. So, that is the incident uh, incident mark number and then the second uh, and this m 2 is the refracted is, is the refracted shock wave for the uh, for the for the uh, for shock a actually and that is shifted at the, that, that that is basically incident the, the inc incident wave is now at uh, theta 2 deflection okay so therefore the origin of us of over here and the other di diffracted uh, refracted wave is at angle minus theta 3 so therefore the origin has shifted over here okay now let us look at one thing now you can see here now what is interesting is that that these two curves interact right these two curves interact here but now for say this curve shock wave this is a right for for shock wave b right this is a refracted shock wave b so we we go along the curve of m m2 we clo, glo, uh, go along the curve for m2 so this is for m2 and like we have drawn here this is for m3 okay now we go along the curve m2 right at some angle so, we go along here, right. So, we go along here and we reach. Um, okay. Now, the point is that we said, we said here that because of this physical condition here, now P 4 is equal to P 5. Okay. So, what we are saying is when Mark 1 here uh, goes past the shock structure A and B, it uh, it, so, the pressure right behind the shock structure is P 4 and when this flow goes across the shock structure C and D, then the pressure here is P 5. Now, these two pressures are same. Okay? So, therefore, for the second uh, shock wave here B, right? for B, here we are going uh, here. right? So, we have this pressure here. So, at some point we will have P 4, we do not know the say the angle here, the deflection. So, now let us say, so say this is, um, 
say p uh, 1, 2 and uh, is that 3? Okay, so 1, 2, 3. So, this is 4. Okay, this is 4. So, similarly, if we go along Mach 3 curve, right, Mach 3 curve and we move like that, then at some point we also get, so if we move along this way, right, at some point we get P5. But like we said, like we uh, said over here that P4 is equal to P5. So, there is one point here where these two curves interact. So, this is the point that we reach. Okay. So, this is the point we reach so that P4 is equal to uh, P5. So, this is the region. Okay. So, if you see this, okay. so this is the uh, point. Now, what we are saying is that from theta 2, therefore, we moved this much. So, we moved this much. Okay, and this and this say is the amount is say theta four. Okay, and from theta three we moved this much here, which is theta five. Okay, so therefore what we can say here is that uh, so and let us call this angle. Let us call this angle as say phi. So just from this diagram, what you can say is theta three right plus theta 5 is equal to phi right and theta 2 minus theta 4 is equal to phi. So, if you just look at this plot over here, so theta 3 plus theta 5 gives you phi and theta 2 minus theta 4 gives you phi. Okay. So, this is what this sort of uh, diagram here, so this is the phi theta diagram for a uh, shock structure of uh, of uh, this nature okay now uh, so having talked about oblique shocks and normal shocks in some detail uh, let us now look at two two things which um, i think is the right term to look at okay so now i've talked about um, detached bow shocks right detached curve shocks um, behind. Um, so, if we have say a blunt body, right? If I have say a blunt body uh, like this, right? So, we have these detached shocks like that, okay? So, now uh, if we were to look at, um, so let us, let, us, let us do something over here. So, let us say this is the so, let us say this is the incident Mach number here. So, this is the incident supersonic uh, flow. Okay. Now, what we are going to look at, what uh, you know, we are basically going to look at the um, uh, theta beta m diagram, right. So, we have the um, the theta beta m diagram. So, if you have theta, and if you have uh, beta, then you have uh, plots, you know, like this. Right. So this is what we've been uh, talking about so far. Right. So this is for a particular Mach number. Okay. So let's say here we have this Mach number, this. Okay. So what we are basically looking at here is that for a given uh, Mach number here, you know, for a given uh, shock wave angle, what sort of deflections is going to, is the flow going to suffer at various parts of this. Okay. That is what we are going to look at over, over here. Okay. Now, let us say, let us call this point as say A. Right. So, say this point is A. Now, if you look here, if you look here, the flow is, the, so the deflection here is, it is pretty normal. Right. So, therefore, it corresponds here. So, if I, if I look here, so for this point A, so it corresponds to say this point. So, this is say point A. Right. Now, if I move slightly uh, further up, right, if I move slightly further up, so say this is say B. Right. So, say this is uh, at this point which is uh, B, right. So, there is a little more deflection, right, instead of being straight 
uh, normal. So, which means that I increase the theta a little bit. So, I come over here. So, then this is beta. Okay. Now, in here, what uh, you you will basically see is that in this particular uh, diagram over here, right? So, here this is for m 1 and the further you come down, this is for m 2 less than 1 and this is m 2 greater than um, 1. So, basically in this part of the curve, what you have is that you have a supersonic uh, flow right where it goes past the shock wave it becomes subsonic so it's basically a region of very strong shock right and here what you have in this region is that you go from uh, supersonic flow and the shock uh, and the mach number beyond the sh behind the shock is also a supersonic so this is the region of weak shock so let's just say this is the weak shock and this is the strong shock okay so say we move uh, at the region B. So, therefore, we are still in the strong shock region. So, we keep moving. So, we keep moving say at the point C, at the point C, you know, which is just about here, just about uh, here. Okay? Uh, so, we still, are, we still are in the strong shock region. Now, if we move from here just slightly a little bit, little bit over here say, Okay, say C dash. So, if I move to say C dash over here, okay, I am in the weak shock region. Okay. So, there is this very thin uh, sort of uh, region over there, a little thin region over here where I transition from a strong shock to a uh, weak shock uh, region. Okay. And after that, it becomes weaker. Okay. After that, it keeps becoming uh, weaker okay. and beyond the point, it uh, we get what we call as a Mach wave. Okay? I will talk about that just in a little bit. Okay? So, now let us look at, let us come back and look at this region. So, therefore, if, so in this region therefore, if I were to mark out this uh, region, if I were to mark out this region, okay, so something like this. So, basically from this region here, this region here is a strong shock region, right? Like uh, we are able to explain this. So, Mach number is here, say M2 is, is subsonic. So, this is a strong shock region, and so beyond this, you have a weak shock region, okay? This is a weak shock region, so that M2 is greater than 1. So, what you see is for a bow shock region, you basically have a combination of uh, supersonic, supersonic and subsonic flows. Okay? Now, uh, as the shock becomes weaker, finally we get what is a Mach wave. Okay? So, uh, what exactly am I talking about when I say Mach wave? Okay? Now, um, let us sort of um, go back and look at this uh, plot which we had looked at before. Okay? So, if you remember this in one of my earlier lectures we did this. Okay? Now, say we uh, do this. Okay? Now, if you see this, this is the, this is the, this is the, uh, so basically what we have is a stationary source of sound and which is emanating sound waves. Okay? This is the one. Okay, for this here, this uh, source of sound is moving right? and you can see that this is moving subsonically. Okay, in here it moves subsonically, and if I come here, what you see here is that this is a sonic movement, and now let us look at this. So, this is moving supersonically, is not it? Okay, so, what we are going to be interested in these two cases, okay, these two cases. So, this is the subsonic case, and this is the supersonic case. So, let us just sort of uh, look at this. When I say this is moving subsonically, what does it mean in terms of say uh, numbers? So, for example, so basically we have we have, uh, you know, this is a, a source of sound like a car horn, say, right? And say at it's it's emanating, uh, you know, sound waves. So say at after I say time t, where the speed of sound is a, 
right. So, there is a sound wave, right. This is a sound wave which has traveled say for time uh, t. So, this uh, is at point A and um, this is say A t, right. It is continuously emanating. So, within this time t, so we have other source of sound etcetera, but this uh, source has actually moved over here, is not it. So, this source has moved over here, point B. So, and uh, say it is moving with a velocity v t. So, this distance is v t. So, what you can is clearly see from here is the v is less than a. So, therefore, this is subsonic. Okay, so, this is uh, subsonic. Okay. Now, now just let us look at what will happen if it is um, if it is uh, supersonic. Now, so if you look at this uh, plot over here, right? If you look at this diagram here, what you see is that there is a cone of disturbance which is traveling, right? There is a cone of this disturbance which is traveling, and so there is a large. So this is a disturbance, right? This is a disturbance, and if I were to do this, right, this is again traveling, and in this A, the source of sound is actually moved from A to B here, right. So, what you see is a cone, right. Now, if I draw a tangent, so basically a tangential surface. So, if I am going to look at from outside, all I look at is a surface, right, which is engulfing all these disturbances which is traveling at me, okay. So, basically what this has is several other um, shock wave, the several other disturbances like this, okay. So, this is what I am looking at. Now, in this same time uh, t, the source of sound has traveled from point A to B. So, clearly V is greater than A. So, this is supersonic. This is supersonic. Now, just think about this. Now, if I were to stand here, right, if I were to stand here, what I am going to see is that there is this surface region which is moving towards me at some sort of uh, a speed, right. And this is engulfing a region of disturbances. Now, this and this is moving at an angle, say, this is an angle. So, let us uh, call this angle as mu. Okay. Now, if you look at this um, a triangle over here, okay, let me make this a little more uh, clear. Okay. Let us make this a little more. So, say this. Okay. So, this is a uh, t okay and we have this which is v t and this angle here is mu so if i do the simple math here is that sin mu is equal to a t by v t which is a by v which is 1 by m right therefore mu is equal to sin inverse 1 by m. So, like I said, if I were to stand here and look at this, right, all I will see is that there is this region which is moving towards me and it is engulfing a region of uh, disturbances, right. So, this is basically a Mach wave. This is basically a Mach wave. Now, consider this. If instead of this car horn, or which is a small beeper or very small uh, source of sound. Instead of that, if we have say a cone, if we have a cone which is blasting through the atmosphere at supersonic speeds, then instead, so what we will have here, instead of this, you know, a weak sort of a wave traveling engulfing disturbances, what we will have in this case is a very strong shock wave is a very strong shock wave, right. So, therefore, when we say uh, here that we have a shock wave, so just think about it. In this case, we have a shock wave and as this shock wave becomes weaker, it becomes a Mach wave. So, basically, Mach wave is a limiting case of a shock wave. It is a very, very uh, light shock wave. So, the, the more this becomes strong, we engulf in we, that 
uh, disturbance uh, basically becomes a macro, uh, basically becomes a shock wave. Okay, that should be all. Thank you.